Okay, so seeds are kind of a, a more computer science-y technical thing that we have to worry about. Um, you really don't need to fully understand them. You just need to know kind of why we use them and what they do um, kind of at a conceptual level. So on your computer, um, when you tell your computer to generate a random number, um, like in Excel or in R or in any program that generates random numbers, the way it generates random numbers is actually with some fancy algorithm. Um, and it starts with some initial number and then it starts generating, it goes through a whole bunch of different iterations of that number and then ends with some random number. Um, and so what you end up with is something called pseudo randomness. You don't have true randomness because you're starting with some given number and then it's generating something with that. Um, every program uses some sort of different algorithm to figure out the randomness. Um, and the dangerous part about this is you can actually reverse engineer the algorithm sometimes, um, especially with programs that don't put lots of detail into their random number generating algorithm. Um, there's a semi-terrifying story of, of this actually having um, negative effects. Um, in 2018, um, some computer scientists discovered that the immigration lottery in Canada was run with a random number generator, but it was run with a random number generator in Excel, which does not have a very complicated number generating process. And so they were able to reverse engineer Excel's random number generator, and they were able to predict which um, numbers would come up in the immigration lottery. And they were able to predict who would get chosen for the lottery um, because they were able to figure out the, the algorithm for it, which is like slightly terrifying. And so we, we don't want to do that. You want to use like good algorithms for choosing randomness. So if you're doing anything with like real human um, consequences, don't use Excel for generating random numbers. It's a bad idea um, because it's, it's an easy algorithm and people have figured out how to reverse engineer it. So that's potentially dangerous. Um, the way these things work is all of these random number generating algorithms, including Excel's, they have to start with something called a seed, which is just a number. Um, in R, this is whatever the current time is on your computer. Um, and then, so it's all the numbers in the time, and then it adds it to the process number for R. Um, behind the scenes, every time you open up a new program, your operating system, if it's Windows or Mac, assigns every program a number. Um, and that's like the process ID. And so really it's just taking the current time and the process ID, sticking it together, and that's the seed. Um, which is fine because you're not, you're not running like national immigration lotteries with your with your computer in R. Um, the interesting thing about this is if you start, if you use the same seed on two different computers, um, you'll get the same number using the same, if you have like a random number generating function um, and you use the exact same seed, you will get the same number. So if all of you out there if we could somehow get it so that we had the same process number for R, like we opened it in the same order as all the other programs on our computer and it was all process number like 52. And if we could hit a button at exactly the same millisecond to run a function in R, we would generate the same numbers. But that's very, very difficult to do. If any of us are off by a millisecond, then we don't get the same numbers. Um, so what you can do is you can set your own seed. Um, and make it so that the numbers you generate are the same every time. And this is important because um, we just talked about the candidate example where we don't want to be able to reverse engineer um, things. Um, we don't want to be able to predict um, the future outcomes of a lottery. Um, but when you're doing stuff in R, if you're plotting stuff, we want randomly positioned things to be the same random positions every time you do it. And so we want to make sure that the randomness we have is reproducible. So to test this, to test this reproducibility idea, what I want you to do is open R on your computer and you're going to run this line of code here. It's R norm. Um, it's a function that generates, it, it generates random numbers from a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And so it's gonna choose some number between like negative two and two. Most of the numbers are gonna be around zero because that's the average. And it's going to choose three numbers because we told it to do three. We have R norm three. So go ahead and open up R and run that line. And you will get three numbers. Um, and I can 100% guarantee 
that it will not be, I had five here, ignore the five, it should say three. It will not be these three numbers. There is no possible way that you got these exact three numbers. Um, if you did, I'll give you five bucks or something. Um, there's no way without setting a seed or without doing anything that you could get those numbers um, because it's just like pure randomness. And so if we want to generate those same numbers again, it's impossible. They're gone. Um, so now what I want you to do is to do the same thing. Open up and keep R open, but you're going to run two lines of code. You're going to run this first line that says set.seed and then one, two, three, four. And then you're going to use our norm and generate three random numbers from a normal distribution. And if you run set seed, hit enter, and then have our norm three and run that, I can 100% guarantee if you're using the most recent version of R that you will generate these numbers. Go ahead and try it and you will see. And they'll be the same numbers. And the exciting part about that is like it's the same. Um, even though we have completely different computers, we have completely different times that we're running this, we have completely different process IDs for R, we're still getting the exact same numbers. And the reason we care about this is we're not running a lottery, um, but we want to be able to reproduce things. We want, if we're working with random numbers, um, we want the same random numbers every time. Um, so that if we're doing some sort of simulation, um, we want to be able to get the same results the next time we run the simulation. Um, there are horror stories if you take any PhD methods class or master's level methods class about statistics. Um, often you'll do some sort of simulation and the teacher will say, set a seed or else you'll never get those numbers again. Um, and it is true, you will never get those numbers again unless you write down a seed. Um, one of my professors when I took a statistics as a PhD student, um, he had to run a simulation that took like a week to go through and they got all the numbers and they wrote up the whole paper and they submitted the paper for publication and the journal said, cool, this is great, we're super excited. Um, we want to be able to run it on our computers so that we can make sure the results are the same. Um, but we're running it and we're getting completely different numbers. And so my professor was like, oh, let's find out what the seed was. They never set a seed. Um, so the only way to get those exact results again is to go back in time at that exact number of milliseconds with that exact process number in R and run it and you can't. And so they lost the results to time. So you want to be able to reproduce things and get the same results. Um, this is also important if you ever do Bayesian modeling. Um, when you do Bayesian regression, it's essentially just a whole bunch of random numbers that are generated until it settles on a specific number. And so if you set a seed when you're doing the Bayesian regression modeling, it'll always choose kind of the same random numbers every time you run the analysis. Um, and you want to be able to do that so other people can get the same results you're getting. Um, but this is a data visualization class, not a simulation class and not a Bayesian methods class. But this is also important because when you jitter things, that's using randomness to move dots around. And so if you jitter something and you get dots and they look cool, the next time you create that plot, the dots are going to be in a completely different place. And then you create it again, and the dots are going to be in a different place and a different place. And that's no fun, um, especially if you're trying to enhance the graphic in like Illustrator. Um, you'll have a plot, you'll generate it, it'll have dots somewhere, and you'll put that in Illustrator, and then you decide, oh, I want to change one of the colors. You'll run it again in R, and everything's going to be in a completely different location when you put it back in Illustrator, and you don't want that. If you set a seed before you jitter, the jittering will look identical every time you run the plot. Um, this is also true with Geom Text Repel. It uses um, a seed to help figure out where the, where the labels go. And so you want to be able to set a seed so wherever your labels end up, they're always going to be in that same spot every time you create the plot. Um, so what is a good seed? We've been talking about like you need to set some sort of number. There's no good rule for this any whole number will do. What I generally do is I use a seed of like one, two, three, four. And if I'm doing a plot and I don't like where one of the jittered points is because it looks like it's too far out, then I'll bump the seed up to like one, two, three, four, five and run it and see if that moves the point somewhere else that looks better. And if not, then I'll go up to one, two, three, four, five, six, or I'll go down to one, two, three, um, or I'll hit one, one, one. Like I'll just choose different seeds until the jittering looks okay or the labeling position um, looks okay. 
Um, often people will just say like set seed is one or zero or just a simple number. Um, some people are really particular about their seeds. They'll choose like their favorite number. Um, because we're in nerd land here, people will often choose 42 because that's from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's the, the answer to everything in the life, in, in life, the universe and everything. Um, I've often seen people use this as their seed, this 8675309. That comes from a song from the early 80s about a girl named Jenny, and that is her phone number. And it's from a popular early 80s song. And people will use that. Or you just choose your favorite number. It doesn't really matter. Um, I've often also seen people use um, the current date. Um, you can't have any dashes. Um, the seed has to be a whole number. Um, but if we were doing like a date-based version of a seed, we could put 2020-05-19 um, because that's the day I'm recording this here. Um, and so that's another way to get a seed. One, the kind of the best practice, the good way to get a seed, none of those are random. Those are just like one, two, three, four. So if you do care about somebody being able to reverse engineer your, your algorithm, if you are running the Canadian National Immigration Lottery using R, you're not gonna wanna choose a seed like three or one, two, three, four, because people are gonna be able to, to reverse engineer that. So one thing I like to do, there's a website called random.org. And this website actually generates true random values. It does not use an algorithm to figure it out. It does not start with some sort of seed and then generate a number for you. What it, it still uses a seed. What it does is it has a telescope pointed at the sky somewhere that measures atmospheric noise in radio signals. And it uses the count of like different levels of noise and it uses that as the seed whenever you go to their website to generate a random number. And so that way, like the amount of atmospheric noise constantly changes. And so the seed is constantly changing. It's not based on a clock. It's not based on the process ID. It's not based on anything that's kind of more arbitrary. Um, they argue that it is true random atmospheric noise. There's no way to control that. There's no way to predict what it is. And so what lots of like actual state lottery commissions will use and other places that care about true randomness is you can go to random.org and choose random numbers there. You can run a whole lottery with random.org. Um, what I use it for is I, if I'm doing like an actual analysis for research and I want like good practice and not just have a seed of one, two, three, four, I will go to random.org and have it generate a number for me. And I will use that randomly generated number as my seed. And then I just stick with that. Um, it's still, somebody could hypothetically reverse engineer it if they really wanted to and they had supercomputers to do it. But my initial choice of that seed was based on pure randomness, not on um, not on like a pseudo random number that I figured out. It was based on weird atmospheric noise and it, it feels cool and scientific and random. You should use it, it's fun. They also have an iPhone app and an Android app. And so at parties, um, you can choose random numbers that's based on true randomness from the atmosphere instead of whatever algorithm your phone uses to, to figure out random numbers. So check that out, it's a cool site. So best practice is if you're doing anything in your document that has any random thing in it, um, if you're using jittering or if you're using geomtext repel or if you're generating random numbers, um, best practice is to add a line of code at the beginning of your document called set seed and just stick a number there. And then every time you run that document, all of the random stuff will be the same every time. Um, sometimes you'll have a function that has a seed argument and you can specify a specific seed instead of relying on like the whole document seed. Both geom label repel and position jitter have this, have a seed argument in there. So you can say geom label repel, do all of your labeling and mapping and setting the color and all of that stuff. And then there's an argument for seed and you can type in whatever number you want. Um, position jitter does the same thing. So you can set specific seeds that way. So an example of this, um, here's a strip plot of the miles per gallon data set looking at drive type and highway miles per gallon. Um, these points are randomly jittered here. And so we're saying G on point, position equals position jitter. In the past, we've only done width equals something or height equals something to control um, how wide things are jittering or what direction they're jittering. But here I included seed equals one, two, three, four. So if you run this code on your computer, 
if it's a Mac, if it's Windows, if it's an RStudio Cloud, if it's anywhere, you're going to get these three dots in that exact location um, every time you run this plot because we've told it to use this seed. And so that's the random configuration of dots. Um, if I don't like those dots there, I could change this to one, two, three, four, five, and maybe this dot would end up over there. Um, maybe this dot would end up somewhere else. Um, but it's going to be the same regardless. And that's kind of the main lesson you should remember from seeds. It lets you do random stuff in a reproducible way. And so any plot that you make with random stuff, any simulation that you run with random stuff is going to be the same every single time you do it. So use seeds whenever you use random stuff and you should be, in, uh, you should be good to go.